you up with that iron, Jake. Stop being so jittery. We haven't caught yet. The first time for everything. Not if we play it the way Phil Sheldon told us. Take care of it, Bob. Thanks, Howdy, gents. Well, Ira, something going on? Association meeting, Roy. A closed association meeting that us little fellows ain't welcome to sit in on. No, I didn't know you boys was members. They always let us in before. Tell you what, you loan me $500 and I'll join that highfalutin association. Now, Bill, I don't make the rules for the association. I don't belong. Give my best assent to it, will you? You can defend those greasy sack outfits all you want, Cartwright. Maybe the Ponderosa can stand losing 20, 30 head a month, but the rest of us can't. We've got to do something about it. Well, I'm not defending anyone, Simmons, but there is such a thing as proof. From Sheriff Coffey? He can't get proof or anything else. Well, until he does, I suggest that, well, we take the losses. Are you telling us we haven't the right to protect our property against cow thieves? It's Coffee's job. I say let him do it. Coffee. There's only one way to handle them. Chase them off, all of them. I don't go for blanket indictments. Lumping people into a group, pointing the finger at them. That's true. Maybe one or two of the small outfits have... Guilty of some rustling, but that doesn't mean they're all guilty. That's your personal opinion. Which reminds me, it's your father who's a member of this association, not you. You all know my father and my brothers are all in St. Louis. Well, since they're not here to vote, I don't see why we have to listen to your personal opinion. My father gave me his proxy before he left to vote as I felt. Looks legal to me. So as I was saying, just because a man has a small outfit or has had some bad luck or can't afford to belong to the association doesn't automatically make him a stock thief. Adam's got a point there, Simmons. Make up your mind, Jameson. 
Do you want to go broke because of these parasites, or do you want to get smart and put an end to it? Like how, Simmons? The same way they did it up in Montana a couple of years ago. When they got through, there wasn't a greasy sacker within 200 miles. What'd they do? The same thing I'm proposing we do. Hire a range detective. You can't be serious. We all know what they are. It's just a fancy name for a hired killer. Coffee can't get the job done, so we hire someone who can. What's wrong with that? Why don't you ask the people up in Montana? Sure, it's true. There wasn't a greasy sack or a small common left, but there was a dozen good men, dead, homes burned to the ground. And I hate that it'll live for years in their place. Now, is that what you want here? Adam, we've got to do something. As president of this association, I propose that we hire a range detective to put a stop to these losses before we all go bankrupt. Now, let's have a voice vote. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those against? No. Looks like the Ponderosa has been outvoted, Cartwright. Adam? Ira? We'd uh, sure like to know what's going on in there. You expect him to tell us anything? The association decided to bring in a range detective. Oh, so that's why they kept us out. You won't be satisfied till you drive us all out, will you, Cartwright? You got a pretty short memory, Shelton. Hadn't been for the Ponderosa, most of us would have gone under long ago. That includes you. You just talk for yourself, Tatum. As far as I'm concerned, Cartwright's no different than Simmons or any of the rest. They ain't gonna let us get big enough to give them any competition. Sheldon, you talk too much and think too little. Well, at least I don't go around calling my neighbors cow thieves just because they don't belong to some fancy association. Would you like to change your vote now, Cartwright? No, I think it's still wrong. Sheriff, shot clean through the brisket. Now simmer down, Kobe. Ooh. Jake Denton. Where'd you find him? Ah, oh, way out in the middle of nowhere, out in Black Oak Canyon. Take him over to Doc Dawson, will you? Yeah. Some of your men will mound up. We'll go out and have a look. Adam, I'd like to have you and Mr. Simmons there come along. this, a couple of 4440s. Well, there's a lot of folks using a 44 rifle nowadays, Adam. This running iron should prove he was a cow thief. Looks like somebody did us a favor. Murder's never a favor, Simmons. What's that? It's a two-bit piece. Well, it must have fallen out of his pocket. With him wearing chaps? Any of man ever see the Denton's one without the other? Oh, Jake and Sam were always together. Well, we better check out their cabin then. Maybe Sam's still there. Hey, what?
Nobody here but me, gents. Well, who are you? Where's Sam? Well, I guess he hightailed it out of here about an hour ago. Well, what's your name? Sherman Clegg. Sherman Clegg? I see you've heard of me, huh? That's nice. I like to be well known. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Simmons? Took it for granted the association would go along with you. Simmons, are you off, Simmons? I got your letter, Mr. Simmons. I got here as quick as I could. Clegg, I know you have a reputation. Now, I can't stop the Cattlemen's Association for hiring a flannel mouth gun, but I sure wish I could. So just you watch your step. That's pretty unkindly, Sheriff. I'm a range detective. I get along fine with the law. I do my job, and I don't bother the law. The law doesn't bother me. Down in Arizona, my last job, I didn't have any trouble with the sheriff. Or up in Montana? That's right, no trouble at all. I didn't get your name, friend. Adam Cartwright. The Ponderosa Cartwrights? That's right. The way I hear it, those two-bit cattle thieves have been pestering you, too. Not enough to vote for bringing a man like you in. I'm sure you feel that way, Cartwright. You don't know how it is. man gets around, he throws a long shadow. I mean, he's bound to get a reputation that's all colored up, you know what I mean? Hey, you down there on the end, I've seen you someplace before, haven't I? No. Don't you try throwing no scare into me, Clegg. Your rep don't mean nothing to me. You got it all wrong, friend. We'll have to get together and talk it over. Clegg, I'm going to ask you one question. Did you kill Jake Denton? You mean that man I caught changing brands in the canyon? Yeah, I killed him. That's what you hired me for, wasn't it, Mr. Simmons? Stop the cattle rustling around here? Well, that gives you no right to kill a man, and you know it. Look, Sheriff, I wanted to bring him in to you nice and legal-like. But now he drew a gun on me. I had to shoot him in self-defense. That other hard case that was with him had vouched for that. That is, if you ever find him. Simmons, I'm ready to ride into town if you are. Now look, Clegg. Oh, Sheriff, don't worry. If you want to see me again, I'll be around. Nice meeting you, Carl, right? You know, maybe I'll stop by and see you sometime, that all right? Nobody's ever turned away from the Ponderosa. There's no drift fences up there, Mr. Cartwright. I can't prevent Simmons' cattle from getting mixed up with mine. They do it all the time. Don't get upset, Mr. Holtzmeyer. It takes more proof than that to brand a man a cattle thief. But that's not the point. Clegg gave me the warning. He did? Well, not personally. It was left on my door. It had to come from him. So please, whatever you offer me, I know it'll be fair. Sorry, I just can't buy your place. But, Mr. Cortwright, There's no I... reason for you to sell. That's easy for you to say. You didn't receive the warning. You know that man is judge, jury, and executioner. I've only got 
Less than 36 hours left. So please, no argument. Whatever you offer me, I'll take. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Ira Tatum said you'd help me. I can't help you if you're going to cut, stick, and run. Phil Shelton said you wouldn't help. Said you wouldn't go against your own kind in the association. That's not true. Well, I guess you just proved who's right. Brings you out this way. Well, uh, I'd like to have a little talk. What are you doing after a fox in the hen house? Oh, there's a dirty wolf sneaking around out here. Sit down, Adam. Cynthia? Yes? Adam Cartwright's here. Adam. Hi, oh, Miss Adam. How oh. are you? Hi, Make yourself to home. I'll bring some coffee. I had a visitor this morning. Yes, I know, Mr. Holtzmeyer. He just sold out to Simmons and pulled out about an hour ago. Sold to Simmons? That's right. We've all had a standing offer from Simmons for a long time. Talk real generous, too, about 50 cents on the dollar. But then a man doesn't quibble when his life is being threatened. Oh, Claiborne left last week. Holzmeyer this week. Who'll be next? Claiborne, huh? Did he get a warning? Oh, yes. Yeah, maybe he stole a head of beef here and there rather than eat his own. You know, that's the trouble, Adam. We're all getting blamed for a few bad apples. And there's nothing wrong with Mr. Holzmeyer. He's as honest as the day is long. They all look to you, Ira, as a leader. You're one of them. Can't you do something? Well, I can't give a man courage when the fear of death has been thrown into him. That Clegg has got them all panicky. Now, he's only one man. One man with a gun and the cold blood to use it. Adam, he's put a bullseye on the back of every small rancher around here. And innocent or guilty, any one of us might be the next target. You know, I can't understand why you let the association bring him in. That was a vote, Ira. Ponderosa doesn't control the association or Alf Simmons. Yes. You'd better take a long, hard look at Mr. Alf Simmons. He'd just been here two years, but already... I'm way ahead of you. If he runs all of you little ranchers out, what next? Ponderosa, maybe, huh? Exactly. Ira, he's at the barn. those hides. I'm just about done, Tatum. Those all look like clean brands to me. Hello, Cartwright. 
I hope I didn't alarm you, ma'am. You've been nosing around my place all week. That's what I get paid for. You're trespassing. I got a right to put a bullet right through you. Now, you know, there's some people might think different about that. They might think you shot me to cover up for something. You haven't got anything to hide, have you? At least I haven't found any such evidence yet. I'm going to give you a clean bill of health. To whom? Simmons? To the association. Well, they're one and the same. If I catch you sneaking around my place again, scaring my wife, I'll kill you. Well, you couldn't do that, Mr. Tatum. That's just plain murder. Hey, gents, ma'am. I'd like you to take a little ride with me. Well, why should I take a ride with you? Just trying to do you a favor. What's the matter, Carl? Right, you're not afraid to ride with me, are you? Where to? I can't quite describe the place. It's about three hours from here. I'll have to show you. Got the Ponderosa brand on him. How'd you find him? That's my job. What do you think I get paid for? Suppose you tell me. What do you mean by that? This whole business. Intimidation, unjust accusations, this war of nerves. Is that part of your job? A man's got a guilty conscience. That's not my fault. Property's got to be protected. Then it gives you a license to trample on people's rights? Turn them into frightened animals. You got these little ranches so rattled, there's no telling what they're liable to do. That's the whole idea. You get a man panicky enough, he traps himself. That works every time. Like turning a wolf into a sheepfold. Come on now, that's no way to talk to a man who's just done you a favor. Especially when you get that many head of cattle to get back to your own spread. Well, must be about straight up noon. I ought to be getting back to town. I tell you what, Kurt, right? I like you. I mean, even if you don't want to pay me for what I do. So what do you say I help you with these critters and then you buy me a beer and we get back to town? Thanks. What's up, Iron? Bill Shelton. They brought him in a while ago. Bushwhacked. The doc's in there now giving the sheriff his report. Sure leaves his calling card, don't he? Yes, Adam. Ira. Good to have you on hand, Clegg. I'd like to oblige, Sheriff. The doc here dug this 44 slug out of Phil Shelton's body, and we found this two-bit piece in his shirt pocket. Well, at least he didn't die broke. Where were you early this morning, Clegg? I got a right to know why you're asking. Because that's when Doc Dawson here says that Shelton was killed. Between eight and ten hours ago. Yes, see, yeah, sometime between dawn and now, right? That's right. Well, you want to tell him Adam, or should I? Adam, what's this all about? Well, from early this morning till now, Clegg was with me. Were you giving Clegg an alibi, Adam? I'm just telling the truth. Are you sure? 
All right. I didn't ask that question. But it is a cinch he couldn't be with you and out to Frenchman's Creek at the same time. Frenchman's Creek? That's what we fish Shelton out of. Frenchman's Creek is glacier fed. Pretty close to freezing this time of year. Everybody knows that. Extreme cold would affect a body, wouldn't it, Doc? Meaning Shelton might have been killed earlier or later and I couldn't tell it by the body? You know your cows, Cartwright. I know my corpses. Well, I'm beginning to believe what Shelton said about where you Cartwright stand. Hire away. You're blowing up a big one out there. Never mind the weather. You figure out anything yet? Do you hear me? I can't help but hear you. No, I haven't figured out anything yet. Well, then I'll figure it for you. Tatum's called a greasy sacker meeting for tomorrow. I want him stopped tonight. I'll either chase him off or leave him with one of your two bit pieces. But Tatum's clean. I've been over him with a fine tooth comb. What's that got to do with it? Tatum can ruin all my plans, especially with the help of Adam Cartwright, so take care of him. Look, Simmons, your thinking's kind of mixed up, isn't it? I mean, you hired me on as a range detective, not just as another gun. Oh, come on, Clegg. You use your gun for money, period. There'll be an extra little bonus in it for you. I don't hear you, Simmons. Up to now, up to now, every man I've handled for you deserved it. Now, I'm not about to stick my neck in a noose for you or for anybody else, especially not for the money. So you're afraid of being accused of just plain murder, huh? I guess that's it. It's kind of a quirk I got. And why did you kill Shelton? He was the worst of the bunch. Probably their leader, you know that. I know nothing of the kind. But I do know that our agreement called for me to be able to name every man for you to take care of. I never asked you to take care of Sheldon. So why'd you kill him? All right. That was a personal matter. It finally came to me where I'd seen that face before. He was hired to bushwhack me up in Montana. I had to kill him. Well, I'm the only one that knows it. So you'll do as I say. You're drinking too much, Simmons. Not too much to give you your orders. You just give me what you owe me up to now. You do it tonight. Now, Tatum can follow up all my plans, and if Adam Cartwright backs him up, you hear me, Clegg. I want Tatum out of the way, or you'll end up with that murder charge against you. Clegg, you heard my orders. Yeah, I heard you.
was running in trouble. I, I had a little accident. My horse fell in the mud four or five miles back, broke his leg. I had to shoot him. Come in. What's heard you say that nobody's ever turned away from Ponderosa? I just thought I'd take you up on that. Now take off your poncho. All right, you're always making it plain. You don't like me or what I do. I make my living my way, you make yours your way. Yeah, but with you, I don't think it's just a living. Oh? Uh, I think you'd find a way to do what you do, whether you got paid for it or not. I don't know. I never thought too much about it. Pays pretty good, though, most of the time. No, you got an extra bunk. I'd sure appreciate it tonight. Upstairs. Second room on the right. Thanks. In case we need to remember, it's 11, right? Well, you sure got a powerful lot of mistrust for me, Carver. Right? at Kelso's stable. I'll pick it up next time I'm in town. I'm not exactly going into town, but I'll see that you get this horse back. I probably won't see you again, Cartwright. I'm pulling out. Well, that's the best news I've heard in years. I'm curious, with all the small ranchers still around, why? Well, my business like a gambler's. You got no one to take your losses and leave. Go on, car right. Tell me another killing. 
He really stuck his head in a noose this time. It's Cynthia. He's killed Cynthia. Last night, just before the storm. Well, how do you know that? Well, the ground was dry underneath her body. He ambushed her in the yard. And you're sure it was Clegg? Well, we found a 44 shell and a two-bit piece. And his horse was not far away, dead. Well, he's mounted. I gave him a horse. He left here not more than a couple of minutes ago. You did? How come? He spent the night here. He killed Cynthia. You trying to give him another alibi, Adam? I had no way of knowing. We'll get him. Adam, when he got here last night, was he wearing a black poncho? That's right, Roy, he was. Go, boy. nothing about that turn trip. around now why did you come in here and hide when you saw the posse coming well as long as i've been in this game don't you know i can smell trouble i knew there was something wrong when i saw him riding up out there look i give you my word i don't know nothing about this killing now i didn't do it i'm not that low well, you just save your breath for the trial huh i know who killed her it was summons it had to be now, why would he do murder? He's got you on call. No, that's just it. We had it out last night. He was drunk. He kept demanding I get rid of Tatum for him. Well, I decided I'd had enough of him. I was on my way out of town when my horse fell. Why the sudden reformation? What I don't understand is why he killed Mrs. Tatum. It... Unless he was just too drunk to know the difference. Look, you give me a chance with Simmons, I'll get it out of him. Maybe you didn't kill Mrs. Tatum. But you've killed others. Sure, I've killed. That's my business. But I'll tell you one thing. I, I've always had a reason when, I, when I've done it. They deserved it. It was always within the law. If it hadn't been, I'd have been behind bars or strung up at the end of a rope long before this. That doesn't justify you or your methods. I think they're wrong and should be done away with. Well, that's your opinion. But that's all it is. You're not God. No, I'm not. And that's why I'm taking you back to town to let a judge and a jury decide about you. You saw the mood of that posse. But one of those hotheads will put a bullet in me. I'll never get before a judge or a jury. Well, you're a great one for talking up for the little guy, for the guy who needs help. You play God there, too? You just give it to those you like or to anybody who needs it? Well, I need it to help me prove I didn't murder that woman. Do I get it? All right. I'll give you a crack at Simmons. But don't try any tricks. He's still hitting the bottle. Maybe he never left here. He left. What do you want? Oh, we just thought we'd drop by. Clegg, what are you doing here? Don't you know the whole town's out looking for you? Oh, why are they looking for him? Killed Ira Tatum's wife last night. You, 
You've gone too far, Clegg. The association's washed its hands of you. Killing a woman. Well, you sure have a bad hangover this morning. Clegg spent the night at the Ponderosa. Well, you're lying. They found a two-bit piece under a body in a 44 shell. Well, now, anybody could have left those there. That your rifle over there? Looks like a 44. What are you trying to do, give him an alibi? He made you the laughing stock when he set you up as his alibi to kill Shelton. You messed yourself up this time, Simmons. Where'd you go last night? Don't you question me. Remember what I know. What'd you do, mistake Mrs. Tatum for her husband? Doesn't matter what I did. Don't give me a medal for killing you, Clegg. And as for you, Cartwright, you just got in the way of a wild bullet. It's that simple. I told you he did it. Why'd you kill him? I had him winged. I did him a favor. I kept his neck out of a noose. And you put your own in it. Not yet. Hey, we are! Three! Drop those guns, both of you! Get her out! Woman, tell her we got him! He's killing all Simmons! Get her out! Now, let's get him. Come on! Now, look, man, you're making a mistake. Clegg didn't kill Cynthia Tatum. Simmons did. Of course he did. That's why he's dead now, so he can't deny it. Drop that rifle, Clegg. He can't take all of us. Clegg is innocent. You got my word for it. Your word's no good. You alibied for him before, but now we've got him dead to rights. Sorry, trying to bust out of here. Adam, what's going on here? We just heard that Clegg killed Simmons, too. Where is he, Adam? Nobody's going to get that man but me. He's dead. Well, where's the body? In the alley. Uh, sorry it wasn't me that killed him. He didn't kill Cynthia, Ira. You still trying to protect him, Cartwright? Yeah. yeah. Right. Hold it now, hold it, Chance, please. I believe I can prove who killed Cynthia Tatum. On account of the man that done it, fell over some cordwood and tore this out of his poncho. Over there. Hey. I believe that's it. Hey, sir. That's Simmons' poncho. Clegg's is still outside on his saddle. That's what I was trying to tell you. Simmons killed Mrs. Tatum. Well, I guess that's about it. Some of you boys want to be useful. Why, we can take these bodies over to Doc Dawson. Al Simmons. He believed that all he needed to put the noose around Clegg's neck was a two-bit piece. And if Clegg hadn't run, he'd have been alive and free today. Why do you figure he ran, Adam? Why do you suppose all of his innocent victims ran? I think he found out for the first time how they felt. He wrote his own epitaph. Get a man panicky enough and he traps himself.
Yes, sir, Joe. You sure would have been proud of me. Doggone it, there I was standing up there in front of all them folks, and they were just a clapping and a cheering, and I stand up there a bowing, and, and the more they'd clap and cheer and stomp, the more I'd bow. With, with, with that hat on? Oh, certainly not. Took the hat off and bowed like this. Bravo, 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 bravo. Hey, Adam, come on in and hear about my, my dream last night. Yeah, he, he was elected governor. Sure was. The whole state. Well, congratulations for bringing the territory up to statehood. That's right, it ain't a state yet. Well, it don't make no difference. It's just a dream anyhow, but it sure was a real one. You know, I'd clap for you if you'd stop bowing long enough to help me finish cleaning out these stalls. Oh, now, Joe, you should know better than Josh around with the governor. Why, he would never stoop so low to mess around and hey. Oh, now, Adam, that's where you're wrong. See, I, I told these folks I was a man of the people. I said, why, from humble beginning, I rose to great heights. And you know something, brother? You are absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> His Honor, the human governor, Puffs Cartwright. <laughs> All right, what's going on now? <laughs> nothing, that burn it, Paul. That gummit, they just won't take nothing serious, that's all. These boys ribbing you again. Oh, a pock, man. He dreamt he was the governor. Now, that, that's, that's the biggest whopper of a dream I ever heard in my life. <laughs> what's the matter with that dream? Hoss, I'd like you to do something for me. What's that, Paul? I want you to go by Jake Town's cabin. Has he moved back up there on Devil Wind Hill? No, no, no. I got a letter from him, though. His uncle is staying at the cabin for a little while, and uh, he'd like one of us to go by and, you know, see that they've got everything they need. They? Yeah, his uncle finishes there with his granddaughter. Uh, a young lady by the name of uh, Amanda, I believe. Well, now, wouldn't it be more neighborly if we all went by? Yeah, I, I, I think Adam's right, Pa. You know, it gets pretty dangerous up there on Devil Wind Hill, that wind blowing one person alone. Now, Joseph, Joseph, you don't really believe that that wind could blow your brother Hoss away, do it? <laughs> oh, you gotta have a little more faith in your brother, Joseph. Just as I have faith in you. In me? I have so much faith in you that I know deep down that you are gonna stay here and clean up all these stalls. <laughs> and I know that you're going to have the south fence fixed before sundown. <laughs> you see, Joseph, that is what is known as faith. That's right, Paul. Man's got enough of it. Well, he, can, he can move mountains with it. Should we put that tea with? Oh, you unpacked last night, Grandpa. Don't you remember? Here it is. I unpacked? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Amanda, how about making it a cup of good Boston tea? Ugh. Amanda, why, why aren't you wearing one of your dresses, darling? We are here for science, Professor Klump, not society. Hmm. Why don't you go back to Boston, darling? Grandpa, I do not want to talk about it. That pack of laughing hyenas. Ugh. Well, I'm an inventor. You, you, well, you just have to expect that. that <laughs> yeah, expect people to call you a crackpot? And your own assistant to laugh in your face when one of your inventions blows up? Huh. And him marrying another girl, and... Oh, uh, Amanda, how, how's the tea coming? Fine, Grandpa, just fine. I think I'll do a little bird watching while you're brewing. <laughs> oh, the tea, I mean, while you're brewing the tea, that's what I...
Well, my name, my name is Cartwright. I, I'm from the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa. Yeah, my, my pa sent me out here to welcome you. We don't want no welcome. <laughs> ma'am. Now go on, just get out of here. Go on. Yes, ma'am, you, you got a powerful good argument there, ma'am. Go on, just keep right on going. Amanda, stop it. Stop it, you'll kill me, Amanda. Grandpa, just drop down, I'll catch you. Ma'am, if you'll just be quiet and calm, I'll help you. Sir, just roll right on off, I'll grab you. No, you have to speak up with Grandpa. Oh. Sir, if you'll just roll right on up, I'll grab you. Well, you don't have to shout. I'm not hard of hearing. My goodness. Don't you think I'm too big a bird? Ah, shucks, no. Just roll right on off. Come on. That's it. Won't stop it till you be here, Mr. Uh, Cart Cartwright. Uh, horse. Just call me Horse. Oh, I'm uh, Professor Phineas T. Clump. Well, I'm I'm happy to meet you, sir. Well, thank you, thank you. I can see you've already met my charming granddaughter, Amanda. <laughs> hey, yes, sir. Charming. Come on, Grandpa. Let me take you back to the cabin. You might have hurt yourself. She's always clucking over me like a mother hen, you know. What about that tea you were brewing? Perhaps our friend here would care for some of it. Grandpa, remember what... Now, listen, we are really indebted to Mr. Cartwright. Now, let's show him some of that warm hospitality of the East. That would be nice. Well, that's, that's mighty nice of you, Professor, but well, I, I don't want to cause you any trouble. Well, it's no trouble, my goodness. It's good to be talking to a man again. <laughs> man. No! Yeah. Oh. Now I suppose you'd be worrying about me climbing that tree for my bird watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, why don't we why don't we move that ladder over? Say, that that's a sensational idea. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that myself? Oh, that'll be great. You have a very interesting name, horse. <laughs> Most people think it's horse, but it ain't. It's just plain horse. Oh no, not that one. Cartwright. Oh, are you by any chance related to Edmund Cartwright? Well, not, not that I know of. Is he, <laughs> is he a friend of yours? Well, a friend? Oh, oh, that I just could have touched the hand of this genius or shared in the secrets of his brilliant mind. You know, man had a this, brilliant mind. Is Ed Cartwright? Yes. Oh, there are men who walk among us like giants, horse. Giants. Why, he gave priceless gifts to the world. <laughs> well, you take the loom, for instance. Who else would have thought of using machines for spinning cotton? This, this Ed Cartwright? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what about his alcohol-fueled engine? There's no telling where that one will end, you know. You don't say. Oh, he's brilliant, man. I hope to use the Cartwright engine on one of my inventions. <laughs> you, uh, you an inventor too, Professor? Oh, inventing is my whole life, horse. Why, it's the only doorway left open for opportunity. Opportunity, huh? Hey, maybe we ought to shut the door so we can hear it knocking. <laughs> Let's see if the tea is ready. Follow me, horse. <laughs> ah, my clump mobile. <laughs> there I was, lined up between two horse-drawn carriages. <laughs> How they laughed at me. <laughs> well, Professor, this... this... Clumpmobile. It didn't have no horse at all? No, it was a completely horseless carriage. Oh, how, how'd it do in the race? It blew up right in their faces. Boy, I nearly scared the pants off it. Pardon me, Grandpa. Well, it, it did just about that. Anyway, we, we came out here to be away from people, you see. Yeah, yeah. Now look, uh, Professor, you ain't gonna try to get that clump mobile started again, are you? Oh, for heaven's sakes, no. That's a thing of the past. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going into space now. Grandfather, you promised. <coughs> <coughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Why, that's the longest devil wind yet. This is the season, you know. The wind only comes up the hill twice a day. Yeah, well, uh, well, thank you a whole lot, Professor, for the tea. I, I reckon I better be heading on out. No, 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 don't leave. Why, you haven't seen my invention. But, Professor, I think I no, better be... No, listen. You are going to be one of the first to lay your eyes on the greatest gift known to mankind. This is the most important invention since the wheel. Important? The most important. I'm a modest man, Horst, but I tell you that the future of the world is out there in that shed. And this is your opportunity to see it. You know, I can almost hear it knocking right now. Let's go, Professor. <laughs> Horse, you prepare yourself for the greatest sight since the days of Leonardo da Vinci. Who? Leonardo da Vinci, the great painter of the Mona Lisa. Oh, oh yeah. And he was also a marvelous inventor, you know. Yeah. Oh, he was centuries ahead of his time. Now, you just get ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Look! What is that contraption? Well, I, I haven't named it yet. But soon they'll take me soaring over mountains and valleys. <laughs> you mean those are... those are your flying machine? Well, uh, they will be as soon as I can come up with some means of strapping them on, yes. Are you, uh, you sure it'll work? Well, I'm as sure as Da Vinci was. Horse, look here. See that? Man has known for hundreds of years that he could fly. All that's been needed is uh, just one courageous soul to prove it. <laughs> yeah. You mean, you mean to tell me this has been going on all this time and I didn't even know nothing about it? Well, it's, it's, it's a very simple principle. It's like uh, flying a kite. You see, the wind strikes an obstacle and it splits and it flies over and under it. And behind the object, it will, the air pressure lessens. Besides that, nature hates a vacuum. So it rushes in to replace it. And the back end of the kite goes up, or, or in this case, the man. Yeah. I, I never thought about it. And all you need is a harness, huh? Well, or, or something to, to fasten them together and on me, yes. <laughs> Professor, I got an idea. I think there's going to be another Cartwright to get into this invention business. If it's good enough for Ed Cartwright, it's good enough for Horse Cartwright. Come on. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> are you two doing? <laughs> horse, horse is inventing a, a, a harness here for the wings, you know. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you look so silly. Well, I feel silly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so silly. <laughs> Come on, horse. <laughs> <laughs> It'll never work. We can all three get in that with room left over. Yeah. Ma'am, we, we, don't, we don't need all of this. See, I'll take some of that off, and when I get back to Ponderosa, I'm going to make a lariat, and I can cinch it up tight, and it'll fit him as tight as it did the horse. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's a new Cartwright invention. The horse Cartwright harness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm only going back to Ponderosa and get that, that lariat made. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Hoss Cartwright. Uh, I guess maybe I should apologize for the way I welcomed you. I mean, since you didn't turn out to be one of those laughing hyenas. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, you know, like in Boston. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you, ma'am. Amanda! Here, here, Grandpa, I'll help you. Come oh, on. Thank you. Oh, Doug, how come you're always half a jump ahead of me? Because I'm half again as smart as you are. 
Hey, horse, how about a game of checkers? No, thank you, Joe. I, I got a bunch of work here I got to do. All right, come on, let's have one more. All right, one more try, that's it. What are those folks like up on uh, Devil Wind Hill? Just ordinary folks, I reckon. What's the daughter like? Oh, well, she's about yay high and yay wide. So's the corral gate. Yeah, what's she look like? Well, she's she got brown hair. Shimmering around her shoulders, soft and sweet. No, sort of like a sort of like a school marm does it. That's what it's like, yeah. A top knot? A school marm? Well, I, I reckon the specs maybe reminds me of a school marm a little bit, too. She's awful smart. Awful smart. That does it. Your move. Sounds like a real beauty. Adam, next time you're in town, pick up the bills at the general store, will you? Right. Whew. And Larry? Yeah, sort of. What for? Hornies. Pretty thin, isn't it? Oh, he's got a pretty thin horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Paul, huh? we got any kinfolk in England? Well, might have. Name Cartwright goes way back, why? Yeah, just wondering if we're any kin to that, that Edmund Cartwright. You mean the man who invented the loom? Yeah, that's no. all. <laughs> he, uh, he also invented an engine that, that uses alcohol for fuel. Ain't no telling where that's gonna end. What kind of fuel you been using lately? <laughs> Can I help you, ma'am? Thank you. I'm looking for Mr. Horse Cartwright. Oh. Miss Amanda, what's the matter? It's Grandpa. He's stuck. Stuck? In the tree. He tried without the lariat. You mean he tried to... And I can't get him down. Is there something we can do? <laughs> no, no, Paul, I'll take care of it. Come on, Miss Amanda. trying to climb a tree without a lariat. Imagine thinking she looks like a school mom. Oh, good evening, horse. It seems we're always meeting at opposite ends of a tree. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it sure does at that. I, I thought she was going to wait for the lariat. What's that? I say I thought she was going to wait for the lariat. Oh, I just wanted to make a small flight from the lower branches, <laughs> the tree. Uh, look, Professor, can, can you get your arms out of them wings? No, I'm afraid not. See, I strained my latissimus dorsi. You what? My latissimus dorsi, I strained it. Maybe I ought to go get a doctor, huh? Oh, no, that, that won't be necessary, horse, no. You see, it's just a, I can't lift that arm, but it, it'll be all right, it'll heal. I, I wrenched the muscle, you see. Yeah, well, we'll have to do it another way. Well, be careful with him, horse. Yes, sir. Here. Oh, by the way, horse, you know, your idea for the harness, smashing success. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it looks a little smashed. <laughs> well, what about the wings? Oh, they're just a few feathers missing, that's all. You see, it's my own wing that I'm worried about, this one here, you yeah. see. Lift that other arm, Professor. Oh, I can. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, I can't. It's... How long does it take that, that latimus or thing or whatever you call it? How long does it take that to heal? Oh, about a month, maybe more. I'll miss that devil win for sure, you know. It only lasts another week. You mean we can't do it? Well, I can. I can. You know, horse, I was just thinking, you're not going to see man in flight after all. <laughs> Too bad, of course, unless someone else decides to do the honors, you know. Yeah. Dad, burn it. That's too bad, Professor. Well, I'll do it, Grandpa. <laughs> Miss Amanda, you're a girl. Well, what's that got to do with it? Professor, will you tell her that this is a man's job? All right, what man will do it? Me! 
Seen oh, you mean our brother, the one that uh, wants to be taken seriously? Well, who else do I mean? He's out there. Hmm. What's he doing? He's flying a kite. Hold this phone with me. What is it? It's a book Hoss was reading. Birds of the Western World. Hey, what's, uh, what's happening, Hoss? Oh, uh, nothing. Dad, Barney. Joe, you know anything about these things? I've been running 40 miles of this this morning. Ain't got it over knee high. Hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a real nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's, it's a well-made one. Great day for flying. Yeah. Joe, hmm? if I was to tell you something, a big secret, would you would you promise not to laugh at me? Horse, have I ever? You know I won't laugh. What is it? Well, you know that Professor Clump up on Devil Wind Hill? Well, he's got this invention, see? It's gonna change your world, Joe, the whole dang world. And I'm gonna fly it. Fly, fly it? Yeah, that's what I'm doing out here this kite. I'm trying to feel out the wind a little bit. I'm gonna fly, Joe, like a bird. And then I'm gonna be one of them, one of them giants among men. <laughs> What's a dead bird, funny? Put salt on my tail? Now, Joe, I mean it. That burn it. Stop it. All right, all right. I'm just joshing you. All right, I I'm am. Joshing you. Now, you say it. You say, horse is going to be a giant among men. Now, say it. Uh, horse is going to be a giant bird. <laughs> a giant among men. Now, say it. Oh, you 300 pound robin. All Fantastic. right. Come on. No. Hey, no, no. Under the water, Trump. Not the... oh, You're going to say it. Oh, come now, on. One last time. You're going to say it? Say, horse is going to be a giant among men. Now, say it. Probably want a cracker? <laughs> hey, Joe. Oh. That did it. Oh. Now, you're going to say it? You gonna say it? Call, call! Well. Oh, hi, Paul. May I be so bold as to ask what what this is all about? Well, Dad, burn it, Paul. I'm just trying to teach him to take me a little more seriously, that's all. Oh, I see. And at the risk of sounding perhaps a little foolish, does, does this belong to you? Well, perhaps, just perhaps, if you were to act a little more seriously, Maybe people would take you a little more seriously. Buck! Come on. <laughs> Forget it. Burn it. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. Understand it. He, he knows we're testing today. 
Oh, Grandpa, you don't suppose he's like the others? I mean, only humoring us? Oh, <laughs> no, don't worry. He'll be here, darling. He promised, didn't he? Oh, do I look all right? Oh, you look just... Why, Amanda, darling, what, what have you done to yourself? Well, I've gone and decided to look like a girl. Oh. I mean, pretty. Is it all right? All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Why, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. Oh, oh Grandpa. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You look just like your mother used to, you know? <laughs> Uh, is it horse? Oh, he's so big and brave. Grandpa, he's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, the world is full of wonderful men. If you'll just look around, big, brave, wonderful men. <laughs> but I guess you've met enough of the other kind, huh? Yeah. But that's all over now, is it? No more suspicion? No more distress? And no more going after strangers with a gun, either. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, Professor. Hello, Hawes. Miss Amanda? Howdy. Uh, this here's my little brother, Joe. He's a Cartwright, too. Ain't you, Joe? No, yeah, that, that's what my daddy calls me. This was supposed to be a secret. Amanda, aren't you going to say hello to the new guest? Oh, uh... How do you do, little Joe? I don't believe we ever met formally. Well, ma'am, I... I don't believe we have. <laughs> Hi. Horse, uh, you haven't told little Joe about, uh, you know... Flying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, I told him, Professor. You did, eh? And didn't, didn't he, uh... Laugh? Nah, not little Joe. He ain't got a laughing bone in his body. Ain't that right, little brother? Oh, yeah, that's right. They, they call me old sober sides. What do you think of your big, brave brother flying? Oh, ma'am, there's nothing I'd rather see than my big brother taking a flying leap. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That's marvelous. Come on, come on, Amanda. Let's get to the test. Come on. Oh, no. No, you don't. Come on, put that horse right over there. You ain't getting out of my sight until after I make that test flight. You go back and tell Paul and Adam and everybody now. Put that horse up. There. Ain't that a grand sight? Hey, what is it? It's my wing, of course. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I'm just making a few improvements, you know. Oh, incidentally, horse, I hope you don't mind, but I ran short of cash down the general store and I charged all our supplies to your account. I wouldn't have done it except that the things we needed were really urgent. Well, it's, it's all right, Professor. Amanda, will you run in and get $17 and, uh, and 40 cents for horse? Oh, sure, Grandpa. Your brother got to be a very important man in these parts. Oh, there, there won't be a person around who hasn't heard of horse Cartwright when we get finished. Yeah, I, I imagine you're right. There's not too many folks in these parts who fall out of trees all over the place. Not fall out, little brother. Fly out. F-L-Y. Fly. 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 I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Fly. Yes, fly. That's what he said, and that's what it is. Oh, the vistas that horse will open up for the whole world. Think of it, little Joe. Man spanning mountains and rivers and whole territories in one day. Why, flight will open up the locked doors to weary travelers and industry and commerce. <laughs> industry and commerce? Of course. No more mule trains carrying supplies over rocky terrains. No more weary buckboard rides into the nearest town. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. When this flight is over, man will be as free as a bird. Oh, uh, nothing's free, Professor. Huh? I said nothing is free, Professor. What, what, what are you, you going to call this thing? Well, I, I hadn't mentioned it yet, but... Uh... Here, Grandpa. Oh, thank you. There you are, horse. Wait. I have an idea, though. <laughs> I shall call it the horsemobile. The 
horse mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the mobile for movability and the horse for the man who's making the whole thing possible. The horse mobile. That's a wonderful name, Grandpa. Yeah, it's the kind of name nobody could forget. Well, we'll, we'll need something to transport the wings, you know. Oh, would you bring that ladder, little Joe? Oh, sure thing. Professor, how are we going to get the wings up in that tree? Tree? What? The tree? Yeah, well, the one where you jumped. Oh, Grandpa was just testing the harness in the tree. The flight is going to be from Devil Wind Cliff. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Watch out for these sticks, Lars. Hey, how heavy is this sack, Professor? Oh, about the same weight as horse. I picked it very carefully. Our tests have to be extremely scientific, you know. Yeah, what do we have to have a test for, anyway? Well, you don't think I'd let the boy go off without one, do you? Well, why not? <laughs> you see, science, science is based on experiment. See, uh, foolproof tests before we allow humans to participate. It's a sort of a trial and error. Hey, well, let's hope horses' flight's a trial and not an error. <laughs> now, look, horse. You just keep here, the wings here. Take them right to the edge, and you wait for the devil wind to start. Okay. Can you handle it? Yeah. Hello? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a big bird. Yeah. Grandpa, I can hear the devil wind now. Here it comes. Here it comes, horse. Push the wings over. Give it a shove. the sack of brain. <laughs> you learn to sew so fast anyhow? A necessity, brother, a necessity. How am I gonna get you off that cliff if I don't get these wings patched up from the test? Yeah, the test. Look, little Joe, maybe there's something you ought to know. You know that book I've been studying, that, that bird book? Mm-hmm. Well, it's up in the hayloft back at the house. And folded inside the pages are my last will and testimony. Just in case something goes wrong. Goes wrong? What do you mean goes wrong? I got a lot of plans made. Plans? Yeah, plans. Oh, horse, that professor makes a lot of sense if you just listen to him. You have to listen. I did. Well, then you must yeah. realize there's a tremendous future in this flying business. Tremendous. We'll make a fortune. Flying? Sure flying. Look, after you make this first flight, horse, we make our own wings then. For what? For you. Horse, I, I can rent you out all over this territory. I can rent you out for, for errands. Uh, I can rent you out for circuses. You rotten, scheming little. You think I'd go through this again and risk my neck for, for money? Well, why not? You're doing it today for nothing. Oh. I see you finished there. Well, well, I'm just about finished, Professor. My horse seems to be all thumbs today. Oh, well, I'd beat myself, son, if I were about to fly. <laughs> Say, little Joe, will you, will you finish that other one there? Sure. Thanks a lot, because the horse has to get his final instructions. <laughs> Gee, how I envy you. <laughs> I wish I were the one going into space. Yeah, so do I. Huh? 
I just said it. I love to fly. Oh, oh, well, that's wonderful. Come on. I'll take you over there. You see, when you get up on top of the hill, now this devil wind, are you listening to me, horse? Horse. You see, the devil wind comes up twice. Hey, us! Yo! Hey, Pa wants you. Hey! that again. Last will and testimony. Now look, horse, if you, if you land on the slope, you know, keep flapping. Don't let the wings drag you. You control them. You see a bird in landing, well, he uses his feet. He lands on his feet. You do the same. You land on your heels and that'll keep you from falling on your face. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, I'll go and see if the wings are ready. You know, I think you might practice. <laughs> it won't hurt any, any harder. Hey, Pop. Did you find horse? No, but he'd better have a pretty good explanation for buying these little things from the general store. Just read that. Three dozen ladies' corset stays, two egret-plumed hats, one dozen goose-feathered pillows, and a 250-pound sack of grain. Has he gone right out of his mind? Ah, oh, yes, his mind. Look at that. Last will and testimony. I, Hoss Cartwright of Virginia City Territory of Nevada, declare this to be my last will and testimony. Now, what's all this about? Ladies' corsets, pillows, whole trousseau, and then the will. Well, haven't you ever heard of a shotgun wedding? A horse? <laughs> oh, no. Either get married or get shot. So, the will. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We got any better ideas? No. But we can sure find out. Joe, I, I just can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? There's nothing to it. If it's so easy, then how about you taking my place, huh? No, no, don't you get the point? Someday, maybe we'll want to carry passengers. You're the only bird big enough to do it. Oh, golly, horse, you look wonderful. Oh. Hey, that, that's almost worth flying for. But the rewards will be much greater than a mere kiss. Oh. Oh, gee, Hoss, that was fun. <laughs> oh, but we've got more important things to do. Come on. Come on. <laughs> to the runway, man. What do you mean by the runway, Professor? The, the path I cleared. <laughs> See, now, horse will run right down to the edge and then take off. That's it. <laughs> horse. Horse, I want you to give it all you got. Really go, horse. Now, remember, horse, it's like diving into the water. That's all it is. <laughs> Professor, I can't even swim. Oh, don't worry about swim, horse. Just flap, brother. Just flap. Listen. Oh, that's the devil wind starting up now. I think. Grandpa's gonna be a big one. <laughs> now get on your mark. All right, horse, wings up. All right, let's go now. Come on, on your mark. Get set. Get it all you got, horse. <laughs> go ahead, horse. <laughs> Biggest bird I ever saw. 
That's no bird. That's your brother. Hey! See, you're playing this game too, Joseph. Uh, wait, no, no, not exactly, Pod. It's Professor Klump's invention. I think I'll go help Adam. There's a Klump. Yes. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Professor Klump. Oh. Yes, your son just took a, a plunge toward immortality. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like he almost made it. Oh, what's been going on up here? Why, didn't you know? This was Horse's big opportunity to prove that man can fly. <laughs> Man can fly? Yeah, but unfortunately... The... Hey, Professor! <laughs> professor, we did it! We did it! We did? Yeah! Didn't you see? Oh, hi, Paul. You all right, son? Yeah. See what, horse? Professor, I, I'd have flown all the way to Virginia City if that wind hadn't pushed me down. What? Yeah. yeah. Didn't anybody see it? That burning that took off like a shot out of a cannon. And the wind stopped the flight? Sure did. Professor, that wind ain't no good whatsoever for flying. No, sir. What a man needs is a feller to fall on a ladder like little Joe did. That's what's going to make a man fly. Oh, uh, uh, a fulcrum. Well, bless my soul, I never... A fulcrum of all things. <laughs> Sure! Yeah! What's a fulcrum? Oh, a lever, you know, the catapult principle. Oh, I see that you have a scientific mind too, Mr. Cartwright. Say, Amanda, we're going to Washington. We'll get this thing patented. And maybe we can get some financial interest. Now? Yeah, why not? They may call me a crackpot, but I don't care. Let them. I've seen it done. Now go ahead, dear, and pack. Go on. I'll write to you, I promise. Horse, the world owes you a debt. A big debt. You know, we... Where's Ben? You know, we should have gone further than Da Vinci. We should have gone all the way back to Archimedes. You mean, give me a fulcrum and I can move the world. Yeah, that's exactly what he said, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> and that's just what Horse has proven. <laughs> Good boy, Horse. <laughs> Paul, uh, 
You ain't mad, are you? Well, how can I be mad at a man who has so much faith in science? And so much faith in my son? Oh, shucks, Paul. He, he didn't know how scared I was until I landed. Hey, hey, there's just one thing I want to know. Now, were you just humoring that old man, or did, did you really fly? Well, little brother, like I always told you, you got to have faith. Why, with faith, you can, you can move them out. Up you go. Don't fly away again. What do you think? Well, I'll uh, go along with that faith-moving mountains, but uh, flying over them? I don't know, Adam. I just don't know. Giving me a hand. Huh? Thank Not you. tall, little brother. Not tall. So away. No, oh, I thought I said a hand. <laughs> you know, Joe, if you'd put a little hog lard on that blade, it'd sure make things easier. Well, really? Remind me to render you down sometime. <laughs> Sure enough, Joe. You put a little more offset in that blade, it would make things easier, sure enough. Cut that out! Hey! You almost shit me! Hey, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Jenkins. Howdy there, Abe. Uh, howdy, horse. Joe. Your brother had him around? Hey, he's in the house. He'll be out in a minute. Hey, uh, what brings you all the way out here, Abe? This is kind of a fur piece from home, ain't it? Yeah, I know it, but I got some business with your brother. Oh, yeah? What kind? Now, look here, Sonny. My business is with your brother. Would you just go fetch him, please? Yes, sir. <laughs> How's Adam feeling, horse? Well, fine, I reckon, Abe. You? Well, no, all right. Adam wasn't feeling so good last time I seen him. When was that? Oh, not more than a week ago, up to my place. Oh, well, Abe, I, I think you're mistaken, Abe. Uh, not. Well, hey, what are you doing in this neck of the woods? I heard you wanted to talk to me. Uh, Abe, uh, Abe says last time he saw you, he was in pretty bad shape, Adam. <laughs> well, this, uh, some attempt at a feeble little joke. Uh, you in on this, Abe? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm right glad to see you looking all right again. Uh, how'd you like that horse I give you? Horse? Yeah, best one I had, valuable animal. Now, I ain't trying to heckle you none, Adam. I had to come to Virginia City anyhow, and I thought I'd drop by. Uh, not that I don't trust you'll be getting around to pay me, but... Uh... Hey, what are you talking about? Well, the horse I give you when you come to me all beat up and broke. Beat up and broke? Oh, yeah, I gave you the horse, don't you remember? On the promise you'd give me $50 when you got back home? I haven't left this ranch for the last 10 days. Ask horse, right? That's right, Abe. I don't understand it. Had to be you or some fellow that looked just like you. That's right. It was a fellow that looked like me. Well, when I called him Adam, he answered back just as nice as you please. Well, why not? If he were beat up and broken, you were offering a horse to a fellow named Adam. But I give him the horse because I thought it was you. Oh, it ain't fair. Now, Adam, Abe's right. Dad, burn it. If, if he gave a horse to a Jasper, it looks like you. Now, it ain't his fault. He's just trying to do you a favor. If... Will you shut up? Which way did this fella head when he left your place? Well, he took the road to Virginia City. All right. I'll go into town, see if I can trace this fella down. You'll get your money one way or the other. <laughs> hey, Adam. Why don't you leave this Jasper B? He's liable to marry you a wife or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, how about a cup of coffee? Yeah, come on. Oh. Family. Oh, hi, Adam. 
What are you doing back so soon? What do you mean so soon? Well, from them supplies and clothes you picked up the other day, I figured you'd be away a couple of weeks. You don't say so. What'd the bill come to? Oh, uh, a couple of hundreds, I recall. Oh, do you want your mail? I think I saw something in your box this morning. Oh, uh, no, a little later. I have to go over to the bank. Morning, Mr. Weems. Hmm? Oh, good morning, Adam. How was Placerville? Placerville? Yeah, it's a place where you cashed that draft. Oh, how much was that? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> you should know that. You drew it. No, I didn't. But I'm glad my friend who did was so conservative. I don't understand, Adam. Someday I'll explain, Mr. Weems. Oh, by the way, don't accept any more drafts without two Cartwright signatures. Huh? Just as you say, Adam. Oh, I got that mail for you. Bad news? Uh, I don't know. Well, do me a favor. Um, if anybody comes in from the Ponderosa to pick up the mail, tell them I've gone to Placerville to seek my image. You're a what? Oh, never mind. They'll know what I mean. Not so tough. No chance. Throw him out. That's enough. That's enough. What are you doing back here, Cartwright? I told you to get out and stay out. I, uh, when you're minding my own business, he's. Creeps jump me, you arrest him, I'll prefer charges. I'll make an arrest, all right. You. Uh, just a minute. Come on, let's go. Sheriff, Sheriff. You were real lucky last time, Ann. Now, don't push me. Let's go. You just wire Sheriff Coffee in Virginia City, he'll prove that I'm Adam Cartwright. I already know you're Adam Cartwright. Yeah, the other fellow just looks like me and he uses my name. Yeah, I know. Let's go. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you one thing. 
You or this other fellow? You sure spin some tall tales. Last time you're behind these bars, you or that 20 years tried to justify killing a man. Killing a man? In the same bar you're fighting in. As a matter of fact, the two men you were fighting with is a friend of the man you killed. As if you didn't know that. Well, why didn't you keep my friend in jail or uh, hang him if he killed a man? You want to play a game, I... I can't see any harm in it. I released you because Anne, the barmaid, said it was in self-defense. That the other man attacked you first and she was backed up by the bartender. Well, all right, uh, supposing I uh, were this man, which I am not, uh, why, why arrest me again? For your own protection, that's why. Those two men would have killed you. <laughs> they might even yet. I wouldn't want that to happen in my town. You know, the man you killed was a no-good gunslinger. But no stranger like you comes into my town and takes a man's life, no good gunslinger or not. Now, I told you that before. And I told you never to come back here. Well, now, look, why don't you just send a wire to Sheriff Coffee in Virginia City? Maybe there's a reward for this Adam Cartwright, or maybe it'll prove that you got the wrong man. Why not? You know, either a very clever man or a very stupid man would try to get away with something like this. Or a very honest man. you come back I'm sorry you uh, you got me confused with somebody else Look, don't play games with me the sheriff will be back any minute Tom Tom I thought we were friends but if you if you don't need me anymore well... oh wait I'm not playing games with you. My name is Cartwright. Adam Cartwright. I know. And Tom Burns. Uh, whoever Tom Burns is, he's just a man who looks like me. Apparently enough so to be my twin. Come over here. Please. Now look at me, really look at me. You look, you look different. Tell that to the sheriff, will you? Hmm? Are you after him too? Who? Tom Burns. Well, if he's the man who's been using my name and my bank account, yeah. Go ahead. Tell him. Tell me what? Nothing. Did you send the wire to Virginia City? Yeah, I sent the wire. Sheriff, you ever hear of a man named Tom Burns? Tom Burns? That's right. I think he may be the one that's been using my name. Is that a fact now? No, but it's a possibility. Do you know him? Well, let's just say I know of him. Same as I know of a man who calls himself Cartwright. Tell me something, Cartwright. If you had a choice, which would you rather be? Tom Burns or Adam Cartwright? I've told you. I know what you told me. 
Well, let's look at it from my angle. This Cartwright, to me, is a man that's killed another man. In addition to this, and according to yourself, he's a horse rustler, a thief. In a sense, he's a bank robber. Pretty unsavory character, wouldn't you say? Put that way, yeah. It's the only way I can put it, because that's all I know about any Cartwright. You take this Tom Burns here. He's got more angles than any Cartwright ever dreamed of. According to this report, he's a convict. An ex-convict, that is. He was sent to prison for embezzling from his own bank. Then two days before his release, he up and kills his cellmate. He really murdered him. Because there wasn't anybody around like Ann to justify it for him. How you like that background? Pretty unsavory. I guess I better wire the prison just in case I got Tom Burns right here. You make up your mind who you want to be. I guess I'll stick to being Adam Cartwright. I don't blame you. I would too. Seems to be the less of the two evils. But either way, you're in a lot of trouble, Cartwright. Sir, you two really look alike. Well, I'm grateful that you were fair enough to wire a share of coffee. Getting kind of late. I think I'll put up at the hotel and get an early start in the morning. Oh, Cartwright, when you get back to Virginia City, will you give my regards to that sheriff? I'm sure smart of him to get me to ask you where your Chinese cook was born. To prove that you're the real Adam Cartwright. Well, I'll, I'll give you regards to Roy. You still going after that Burns fella? You know, he's pretty dangerous. He's already killed two men in two weeks. And he's probably still using my name, too. Oh, thanks again, Sheriff. Good luck. Talk to you. Yeah, sit down. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, the sheriff came by the saloon, and he tells me that you really are Adam Cartwright. You knew that. Not really. Well, you know it now. How long you known as Tom Burns? Well, since the other night when he rode into town. That well, was just a few days ago. You can't possibly get to know a man that well in such a short time. Oh, yes, you can. When he talks to you constantly for two days, you can get to know him real well. I don't know why he told me so many things. Unless it was because he'd just gotten out of prison and I, I was willing to listen. I don't know, but he talked and I believed him. He was innocent in the first place and should never have gone to prison, right? The sheriff says you're still going to look for Tom. Why? Well, because he stole in my name, he killed in my name, and who knows what else. But he meant no harm. He had to do those things. People who hated him forced him to do those things. He's, he's a good man. A good man. Convict, thief, killer. He's not. He's not. He... His partner framed him. He even paid his cellmate to kill him when he was going to get out of prison. And... You don't believe me. Well, I believe that you believe it. But no, I don't. 
So you're going to persecute him too, just like all the others. Well, I'm going to try to stop him from using my name, yeah. I could tell you where to find him. Will you? He's going to meet his wife at a certain place. Oh, he's married. Hmm. You married? No. If I tell you, will you help him? Well, if I find him, I won't be to help him. He's so much like Tom, I... I thought perhaps you'd understand. Remember, I only look like him. Good night. Good night. You're a good cook. I'm hungry. You're also very foolish. Dangerous country for a girl to go riding around alone. I'm not alone now. What do you want this time? I've decided to tell you where you can find Tom Burns. Uh, on one condition. I told you I couldn't help him. What isn't that condition? It's just that I want to come with you. And you said to yourself, this is very dangerous country for a woman alone. What are you running around after him for? What do you want to help me? You know he's married to another woman. I know, it's silly, I guess. Especially for somebody who's been around as long as I have. But I don't know how to explain it. Well, nobody has talked to me that way for a long time, and I haven't been able to talk to a man that way for a long time, not since I was very, very young. And, and I, I don't care that he's married and that nothing can happen for us. But I still believe in him and I want to help him. And I want to find out if his wife believed in him and if she helped him. Well, we'll talk about it while we eat. Grab yourself a plate over there. And he said that his partner, this Jason Everts, kept in touch with him the same way his wife did, by letter, all during the five years he was in prison. And then, two days before he was to get out, another prisoner tried to kill him. But uh, Burns killed him instead, huh? Yes, but in self-defense. And the man confessed just before he died that he'd been hired to do it. Confessed to whom? Well, to Tom, of course. He was the only one there. And then Tom escaped right after that because, well, he had no proof that the other man had attacked him first. He knew he'd never get out of jail. And so Tom jumped to the conclusion that his partner, Jason Everts, had hired this man to kill him, huh? He didn't jump to anything. He had proof. What proof? Well, when he got a horse and new clothes, using your name, he went to Placerville and he wired his partner for help. The help came in the form of the hired gunman at the saloon. And Tom killed him. Self-defense. 
Excuse me, I don't mean to be uh, rude, but, you know, you sure have a way of jumping or coming to a lot of conclusions with very little evidence. Well, by now, Tom may have the final proof, or as you call it, the final conclusion. That's why I want to go along with you, because I want to find out. Well, where is he? Well, when the sheriff let him out of jail at Placerville, he hid from the friends of the dead gunman in my room. He had me send a wire to his wife, Valerie, asking her to meet him at an old house outside of his hometown, a, a place called Lubach. Well, what was he planning? He just hoped that with his wife's help, he could prove that Jason Everts had framed him and was trying to kill him. Those Burns fella sure depends a lot on help from women. Was anything wrong with that? No. I uh, tell you what, though, I'll sleep on what you've told me, and uh, I'll make up my mind in the morning. You may not be very comfortable, but you'll be warm. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I thought the smell of coffee would get you up. If it didn't, I was counting on the bacon. Hope you like your bacon crisp. Lady, I love my bacon crisp. <sighs> oh. Very good. Some coffee. Tell me, uh, you doing all this cooking because you're trying to prove that you're a better cook, or are you uh, trying to influence my decision about taking you with me? Neither. I know I'm a better cook. I also know that you're a man who cannot be bribed, even by good food. I cook breakfast merely because I was awake first and because I'm a woman. Yes, that you are. And that's why I've decided to take you with me. Because I'm a good cook or because I'm a woman? No, because I think you're an honest woman. And I'm beginning to believe in your concern for Tom Burns, even though I don't believe in him. Thank you. Is this it? I, I guess so. Well, it's the only one we've come across in this area, so it must be. Well, it doesn't look exactly the way he described it, but well, what he remembered was five years ago. Well, let's see if there's any signs he was here. It's a cinch nobody's been here for a while. Oh, yes, there has. What do you mean? Smell the air. Smells just stale to me. Another woman's been here. I can smell her perfume. How can you tell? I can't even tell if you're wearing perfume. That's because I'm not. But she was. Tom's wife, she's been here. Well, she's not here now. Neither she nor Tom. But she was here. And I have a feeling something's wrong. Like the feeling you have about Tom being innocent, huh? Yes, I... Look, please, not again, now. We haven't eaten since this morning, so why don't you fix up something to eat and I'll look outside for signs, see if anybody's been coming or going, okay? Well, all right, but I just know something's wrong.
food is overdone, it's practically burnt up. I'm sorry. No, I'm... I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. I guess I'm just overtired and nervous. Did you find anything? Yeah, you were right. There were two people here. Only one went away. One? Yeah, this uh, Tom Burns, the fellow looks like me. Uh, last time you saw him, was he wearing a light tan jacket? Yes, you found him? Yeah. I found him, he's dead. I found him in a grave up there in a cave. Oh. A nice fresh bullet hole right in the back of his new jacket. No, 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 it can't be. It can't be. Well, I'm afraid there's very little doubt. Then she killed him. His wife, she murdered him. Well, now, that's a pretty strong statement based on the smelling of some perfume. It's not just that, don't you see? It had to be her. I sent her that wire myself. All the time he thought it was just his partner who was betraying him, and it, it was his wife. He walked into this trap like, a, like an innocent lamb, and she shot him because the other two tries failed. Don't you see? Well, that's a pretty theory, and it's probably right, but the whole thing is over and done. What do you mean? Tom Burns is dead. The search is over, at least my part of it, anyway. Just like that. Why not? Sure, why not? The imposter is dead. The man who used the name of Adam Cartwright to buy a few extra days of life is dead. The search is ended, and so now, Adam Cartwright can go back to his own untroubled, unruffled, unbetrayed life. Oh, come on now, Ange. All I'm trying to say is that you became emotionally involved with this man and you, you thought you were in love with him even when you found out he was married to somebody else. And to me, he's just a man who stole my name and now he's dead, that's all. Murdered, you mean? Betrayed? Look, Adam, you didn't have to become involved. Not, not really, you know. You could have sent wires and, and left it to the law officers. And I could have shrugged him off, too, but we didn't. And now it's become a... A kind of a responsibility. See? You know, for a woman, you sure do talk a lot. Oh, Tom. I'm sorry. I used his name. I don't know why. Well, it's because despite all the philosophy, you're still in love with him, and that's what's driving you. I'm, s I'm sorry. Drop the gun belt. You know, Cartwright, it's gonna be a double pleasure. First, we get the payoff that Mike missed, then we pay you off for killing him. Stop yapping and get it over with. He's only good to us dead. What's the hurry? All right, get out, both of you. Come on. Thanks. That's about the closest I've ever been. Well, you needed help. Just like Tom needed help. I'll just get some food. I can't have guys like that jumping out of the woodwork at me, thinking I'm Tom Burns. I'm gonna have to settle it. You're right. 
man deserves a conclusion to his life. And if he can't do it and another man can, then it's like you said, it's a kind of a responsibility. Thank you, Adam. Silly. It was a wonderful bargain. Very pretty. What about the uh, Severts fellow? Oh, he's at the bank, all right. I saw him. I got your clothes. Uh, are you sure this is like the one that Burns was wearing? It's as close as I could get. Okay, I'll see you at the bank in ten minutes. You, uh... You don't really like my dress, do you? I said it was very pretty. You know, you're the only man I've ever allowed to buy me a dress. Well, you didn't have very much choice, did you? And bring me the O'Brien file. Yes, Mr. Jason. Jason, I'll need your signature on these. Mr. Jason? What? doing here I've got to see you Valerie it's of the utmost importance you fool after all our talk and you come here in the middle of the day well, something upsetting just happened upsetting. I... lately every little thing makes you hysterical like a woman Tom Burns is still alive that's ridiculous really Jason you're going to pieces now will you get out He's of here? alive I tell you and in town I saw him it's impossible. No, he came to the bank to look at me. I, I saw him. And you spoke with him? No, he, he disappeared before Of course, before because I... he wasn't there. He's dead, Jason. Dead. Yeah, the way he was supposed to be dead at that prison, the way he was dead at Placerville. Those were blunders, mistakes. But this time it's true. I'm positive, Jason. I told you what happened. Nevertheless, I saw him. Jason, we're going out to that shack, and I'm going to prove to you no, once no, no, and for no, no. all. Shut I, up Valerie, and listen I... to me. We're going out there tonight. I'll pick you up just after dark. 
We'll have to take a chance that nobody will see us together. If only we'd gone away when we had the chance. Oh, Jason. Don't bring up ancient history. It's been over between us for years. Only with you. Nevertheless, it's over. It's become a partnership, Jason. Just a financial partnership. But now we can get married. Really? When you say you've just seen Tom with your own eyes? You see? That proves that I was right. It proves nothing. It's just a conversation they can deny. Well, obviously, they were in this thing together. Look, whatever emotional involvement they might have had together is over. And there's nothing we can do to prove that it ever existed, and Valerie's going to keep it that way. What about the money? Well, it's Tom's wife or widow. She has a perfectly legal right to share in any of the bank's profits. Well, so you go, you go out and get the sheriff, and you show him the grave, and you prove that Tom was murdered. And that's all you prove, not who did it. What's the matter with you? You sound like you're on their side. I'm just trying to point out the fact that we don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to actually proving whether or not they're guilty of anything. Well, when I believed in Tom's innocence, I didn't, I didn't have anything to go on either. Faith does not always move mountains. Adam, I think that... I think if you believe something hard enough, you can help make it come true. And I think that if you believe something hard enough, you can make it come untrue. What do you mean? I'll have to show you. All right, let's go. Now, we'll have to wait till after dark. Well, it won't be dark for two hours yet. No, we'll just have to wait. Now we'll settle this for good. This isn't really necessary, Valerie. Oh, yes, it is. We're going to lay this ghost of your imagination right here before you repeat your hysterical story to someone else. Now dig. Please, Valerie. I said dig. Tom, I knew it. I knew he wasn't dead. Shut up, you fool. I told you he was still alive. It was all her idea, Tom. The money from the bank, bribing your cellmate, everything. Stop talking. It's a trick, Jason. I'm sorry, Tom. It was Valerie who shot you. Not me. It was always... Don't do it. We heard everything. And we saw it. years believing in you Still here? I thought when you left my office, you'd be on your way home. 
Yeah, well, I'd planned to, but I uh, wanted to have a farewell drink with a certain lady. And it looks to me like she's exercising that feminine prerogative of being late. Very late. Looks like it's worth it, though. Bartender, the lady needs a drink. The new dresses don't seem able to influence you at all. It's very pretty. If I recall, that's the same thing you said last time. Tom would have... To Tom. To Tom. And to you. I'm sorry Tom couldn't know what you did for him. I just believed in him. That's all. Someday you'll find another man to believe in. Sure. Goodbye. Bye, Adam. Thanks. never forget you, either of you. Thank you. Bye.